W.E.B. Du Bois once said in his book, The Souls of Black Folk, that black people have this double consciousness, which is this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others, of measuring one's soul by the tape of the world that looks on in amused contempt and pity. Du Bois believed that African Americans played a double role in life as individuals seeking their own identities and as outcast members of a racist society that forced them to act deceptively as a condition of their survival. I think the double consciousness also fits with being a biracial person in America, especially when you're mixing with the black race. This topic hits home with me because I myself am biracial. I don't show my face on this channel, but I'm half black and half Japanese. If you need a reference point, just look at Tiger Woods, and there you go, that's me. I also feel we don't really talk about the challenges biracials face, not only in society, but even with their own families as well. Hell, we weren't even able to identify ourselves in the census until 2000. This video is more about putting a lens on what it's like to be a biracial person in America with the help of this book called Black, White, and Other by Liz Funderburg. Quick side note, understand that not every biracial person has the same experience just like with any other race. Now without out of the way, let's talk about the biracial dilemma. If you guys are enjoying the video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share to all your friends. The biggest struggle a biracial person will go through is with how should they identify themselves, especially in America who isn't too keen on a person having multiple races. Oftentimes, society forces you to be one race or another, but you can't be both. An example of this would be a segment in the Chappelle show called The Racial Draft. The segment basically is a setup like a draft you would have for sports teams, but with race. Basically, someone who is biracial would be in the draft and a single race would draft you into their race and be considered that race for life. It's a commentary on how American society can often force biracial people to have to choose what race they should represent. You can't be both for some reason. It's either one or the other. It reminds me of Jasmine Dubois, a character from The Boondocks. Jasmine, a biracial girl, talks about how she hates racial categories, saying, why must I be forced to choose between my parents? I relate to this comment so much. Often when you are a biracial kid and people trying to force you to pick a race is equivalent to picking who's your favorite parent. In the book, Black, White, and Other, a lot of biracial Americans in this book have said the same thing. They often feel like they don't want to have to choose and deny the other race because they tie that race with their parents. Even when someone either chooses to identify with the race or is forced to identify with the race, you're still an outcast. Like if you're black and white, but you choose to identify as black, well, you would probably hear something like, you're not really black because you have white blood in you. It can make you feel like you don't belong anywhere. I remember when I was a kid, I chose to identify as black because for one, that's how society would view me. And two, I was more closer to my mom's side of the family, which was black. It's because I felt so close to that family that I made it a mission to absorb black history and culture. However, when I tried to socialize with black kids, they would often tell me I wasn't quote unquote black enough to be black. I hated that I felt like people had to question if I was a legit black person, almost like I had to take a test every day for how black I am. I know I'm not the only biracial person that has been through that. However, I do feel a sense of loss for not embracing my Japanese side more ever since my dad passed away. Like I said, I wasn't really close to my dad's side of the family in which they happened to be Japanese. It feels kind of melancholy for me because I don't feel connected to my Japanese culture. And in a way, it feels like I'm separated from my dad in that sense. This quote from the book, Black, White and Other, definitely describes how I identify myself. I always consider myself mixed, but I also consider myself black because the way I was brought up was that that's how people were going to view me. Something I don't think gets talked about enough is how a biracial kid is raised. From the outside looking in, you might think that we got lucky in being able to celebrate two cultures, but honestly, it can come with a lot of turmoil depending on certain parents of two races coming together. In this book, many parents separated or got a divorce when the biracial person was still a kid. 
Not only that, we don't talk about how extended family treats a biracial person, especially when you're mixed with black and white. I read through stories in this book where they said that white side of the family completely disowned not only their kid, but the parent. I even read a story where the white side of the family considered the parent of the biracial kid dead and went as far as to have a funeral for that family member and everything. Something that I feel parents don't understand when it comes to a biracial kid is their experience will be completely different than the parent's experience when it comes to dealing with race, especially if the parent is not biracial as well. Dr. Mindy Thomas Fullerlove, a psychiatrist, explains the dynamics between parents and children when it comes to having a biracial family. She states, for the parents, it's the consciously chosen thing to live in this way. But the kid didn't choose. They just have to grow up in the midst of it. That's a really important distinction because the parents tend to think it's the same for the kids as it is for them. And it's truly not. Parents who are not biracial that have biracial kids, I don't think know or even have a blueprint on raising their kids and to help them deal with issues that are unique to biracial children. For example, if a biracial kid asks their non-biracial parent, what am I? How should that parent respond? Do you respond with how society would view them even though they are more than one race? Do you act like race doesn't matter and tell them whoever they want to be? Or do you not answer it at all? It can be very complicated for a biracial person to figure out where they fit in society, and most parents are not equipped to that. There's one conversation in the book where a biracial child asks the dad, what am I? The dad didn't know how to answer that and basically made the child find the answer of defining her race on her own. We also haven't touched on how the parents' treatment of the child shape how they identify themselves when it comes to race. I've read that some biracial people in this book wouldn't date black men because of how their father, who was black, treated them so they decided to associate with the other race. I read one person's mom, who was white, would not acknowledge that her kid was black, but her family made sure the child knew that he was black by how they treated them. We don't even talk about the areas the parents decide to raise a biracial kid, which develops a sense of racial self. For me personally growing up, I was very fortunate to have two loving parents and a family that didn't really judge me for having two races. Also, like I said before, we affiliate race when it comes to our relationships with our parents, how we view the world and how we choose what race we want to identify as. So I fortunately felt like I could be who I wanted to be around my family, but understood the outside world will treat me very differently. The toughest thing about being biracial is how much of an outcast you can feel. I remember when I was younger wishing that I could be one race so I wouldn't have to feel not authentic when it came to identifying as a race because that's how people treated me. I wouldn't have the pressure to have to pick what race to identify as and not even be fully included even when I do pick. I really made this video because I've been noticing more kids in America are biracial than when I was growing up as a kid. I wish I had this information when I was younger and to not feel alone and feel I had a community who understood me. And I wanted to help people understand some of the experiences biracial kids can go through and hopefully can help them feel understood or seen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you all next time.